Wayne LaPierre is the NRA. He built the NRA into what it is today. In the 1970s, he started as a lobbyist. If you're a political junkie like Wayne or like myself, it was a wonderful job. You're working with all these people and having these fights, and you're cutting your teeth. But LaPierre was no one's idea of a glad-handing lobbyist. He was a very uh, quiet man. I was amazed he was a lobbyist because he did not have the uh, hail, follow, well met attitude or personality that I associated with politicians or with lobbyists. And surprisingly for the NRA, he was not a gun enthusiast, more comfortable on K Street than in a duck blind. The safest place you could be with Wayne and a gun back then was in a different state because he really did not know anything about guns. Politics, yes, guns, no. And inside the fractious politics of the NRA, LaPierre was skillful navigating between the sportsmen and the gun rights activists. Wayne could put a finger to the wind and see which way it was blowing, and he would position himself so that neither side would be offended and might even think that he were, in fact, on that side. In an organization that is so beset by factionalism, his being unmoored to any particular point of view is actually very helpful for him in terms of being able to ride the torrents that have occasionally swept through the NRA and emerged always on top. During the early battles with the Clinton administration, those political skills were put to the test. In an effort to energize the gun rights activists, he released this incendiary fundraising letter. That the semi-auto ban gives jackbooted government thugs more power to take away our constitutional rights, break in our doors, seize our guns, destroy our property, and even injure or kill us. Aren't you concerned when you say Nazi bucket helmets, uh, government thugs kicking down doors, killing, maiming people, aren't you inciting people? Aren't you willing now to apologize for the tone of this letter? Those words are not far. In fact, they're a pretty close description of what's happening in the real world. And in response to that, many mainstream Republicans, George H.W. Bush being the leading example, said, this, this is not the NRA I'm a member of. President Bush resigned his lifetime membership in the NRA. President Clinton lined up the leadership of the National Rifle Association in his crosshairs today. The NRA fundraising letter calling federal ATF agents, quote, jackbooted thugs. Before long, LaPierre was forced to backtrack. Wayne, right up front, why the apology? Well, Larry, if you say something and you offend people and you didn't mean to, what you do is you apologize. We never meant that letter to broad brush all of federal law enforcement, all of BATF, or all of law enforcement in general. But to the NRA's hardliners, LaPierre was showing weakness. Bad move. There was a big uproar from the NRA membership over that. Uh, the membership wanted a tough guy. The membership wanted somebody that drew a red line, who didn't compromise, who didn't cave. And so in the spring of 1999, as Clinton's proposal to close that gun show loophole now moved from the Senate to the House, LaPierre made a fundamental decision. He would stand what tough. What we see is the president now dusting off every tired old gun control bill that's been around his administration for the last six years. The NRA needed to go and show that it could stand up to the president, that it could stand up, and it could toe-to-toe it could -to -toe meet him in the ring and bash his brains out. <laughs> 